stand up together. Good morning. You guys can have a seat. Good morning. Ooh, yeah, thanks. Happy Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. It's nice and uh and hi Pat. How are you? Pat Davis back from Florida. Good. She's happy We're to happy be here. here. Yeah, and yeah. I hope you brought some of that Floridian weather with you. Yeah. We're we're a little tired of snow in April. So Excellent. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome this Sunday, especially to those of you watching online as well. We're so glad to have everybody here. We have been talking about 
the um, free gift that we give everybody for a little while now, right? So if you don't have a mug yet, like you can see, I have mine. I'm using it. Rob, are you okay over there? Everything all right? Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, you have time to fix it. Don't worry. But anyway, I've got my tea and uh, drinking it out of it. So if you don't have a cup yet and you want one, Pat, I mean, you could get one for being a guest. Yeah, you are a guest. So get your, get your tumbler back there. Sonia's at the Get Connected table. And uh, yeah, sometime I'm just going to bring them up here and throw them out like, you get a cup and you like get a cup. That. Yeah. But I'd hit people, so that wouldn't be good. So anyway, um, stop back, get connected table if you haven't done that before, and get connected. We'd love to learn more about you. Oh, you'd like to volunteer in the nursery. Okay, very good. You can do that too. Tell them at the Get Connected table. We have a few announcements for you today. The first is that we have a trip coming up, an exciting trip. I see Amy. You're close to your seat. Very good. Um, this is a WOW trip, and that is going to be in Gatlinburg, Tennessee in October. So ladies, I know, Chris, I see you're interested. I'm sorry. This is a ladies trip, but you're welcome to start your own. So October 6th through 8th, please sign up. Um, Amy, is there a deadline on sign up? So we're just figuring soon. Soon there will be a deadline. Okay. So sign up. Sign up now if you're interested in that. The next, next announcement has to do with life groups. How many of you are in a life group? Life groups. Okay, good. Yes. Um, I just finished our starting point group. Remember, we've been, we talked about that for a while, then we started starting point, and today was our second meeting. So um, it's really, really nice to get to know other people and get to share stories and learn more about others in our church family. And so this one is focused on the Holy Spirit, and it's a life group, but it's six weeks. So it doesn't, it's not necessarily going to go on for life. You know, it could. could it could. You know. Yeah. But this is a shorter one. So um, this is going to be on Tuesdays at 6.30, and I think it's going to be every Tuesday, or yeah, every Tuesday from April 19th through May 24th. So sign up um, in the back. I think Art Reed, you're leading that one, right? Yeah. So he was like, I'm bored. Give me something else to lead. So they said, okay, Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's going to be good. I Irene said it's going to be good. And you know what? It's perfect timing because, of course, we have Easter next week, spoiler alert, and um, what comes after Easter later on, Pentecost, right, which is all about the Holy Spirit. So what a great time of year to, to talk more about the Holy Spirit and how we can uh, listen to the Holy Spirit who resides in all of us. So sign up, please, so that we know how many to expect. And maybe they'll do food, too. We've been doing food in Starting Point. I had two biscuits and gravy this morning. It's amazing. So anyway, I highly encourage you in your life groups to do food, okay? It's not a requirement, but you should do it. Um, a couple other things coming up this week. This Friday, Good Friday, right? Um, and so we will have a service during Good Friday at noon. And it's going to be less than an hour. And so it'll, it won't be too long, so you can come over your lunch hour. And we're going to also join together in communion. So come for Good Friday service if you can. Just come right here. And like, like we said, less than an hour, communion together. And then we'll be ready for Easter, which will be a week from today. Get here early. No need to make any kind of reservations. But, um, you know, we like to celebrate Easter with, of course, our loved ones. And so think about bringing other people, invite other people. If we extend that personal invitation, people are more likely to say yes, right? But if we just put it out there on social media and we're like, everybody come, um, it might feel more impersonal. So Easter, next Sunday, invite others. We are going to talk about power of a dollar. Is your battery pack on? Are you all set up over there now? Okay, woo, good. So Rob's going to come up and tell us about power of a dollar. So yes, for those that may not know, power of a dollar is what this basket is out front there. And uh, we collect money every Sunday. We just ask folks to drop a dollar in. And by the end of that month, we actually give it away to an individual or, or an organization that needs help. Well, this past month, we were able to give it to um, a friend of mine, Michelle probably knows him working at Skyline in Newport, but his name is Solomon. I think we got to pick, there he is right there. This is Solomon. Uh, he's a buddy of mine that I've gotten to know there and a fellow Dallas Cowboy fan. Yo! Not All right. <laughs> and so uh, we talk about Cowboys a lot. He, a few months ago, I guess, had uh, a heart attack while he was working. He wasn't feeling well. So they sent the ambulance and had a heart attack. He does have some blockage going on, but um, 
I don't think he's gone back yet. Do you know this? I don't think he's gone back yet, but he's feeling better. But I think he may have to go and, and maybe get uh, a stent put in or something. But um, the power of a dollar went to him. And as many of you know, as many of us live paycheck to paycheck, uh, when you don't work, you don't get paid. And Solomon had to be off work for several days, um, which really put, put a burden on them. And so we were able to give power a dollar to he and his wife, Gloria, and they so appreciated it. And so I just want to let you all know, I told him I invited him to come to church this Sunday, and uh, they weren't able to do it. So I said, well, let me get a picture of you. I'll put it on the big screen, and we'll talk about you. So, uh, so that's Solomon. So keep Solomon in your prayers. If you go by Skyline Newport, uh, he'll be usually working there during the daytime. You can say, hey, Solomon, we're at the next chapter church. <laughs> Gals, cowboys, I don't know. Uh, so anyway, that was Solomon. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Um, yeah, let's give a recognition to, to first, Rob, that you just thought to, of Solomon as somebody that could benefit from, from our generosity and love, and that's the whole reason for the power of a dollar. And so we just encourage you to be thinking about people in your life. I mean, Rob doesn't know Solomon outside of Skyline, which surprises me that you go there that often. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on there? But okay, all right. But, um, you know, to hear of somebody else's story and, and need, you know, that's, that's what we're meant to do, is to, is to listen to others and then to share that and bring that forward. And so please let us know, let Brent or Rob or Maddie know if you, have, if you hear of somebody with a need, because that's the whole point of Power of a Dollar. We don't know where it's going to go until we send it. So um, just keep that in mind. And we'll, we'll go into offering, and then I'll pray for Solomon and, and for everybody. Um, we do have baskets that will go around. Dave's got baskets. And, of course, you can give in a multitude of ways, online, the app. And if you have trouble figuring out how to give, we will help you. So, um, But just remember that that's a resource because, again, that's paying it forward. That's how, how we um, bless one another with our finances as well. So I'll lead us in offering. Or, I'm sorry, in prayer. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to lead an offering. I mean, I could if you needed that. But I'll lead us in prayer, and uh, we'll continue worshiping together. So... God, thank you so much for the reminder always that you're with us. On Palm Sunday, we can think about how everybody came together and praised you. And, um, you know, they were so, so excited about welcoming the king. And then how it wasn't very long after that that people seemed to turn against you. And that we wonder in this fickle world we live in why sometimes we have problems. And all we need to do is think about that you're with us and you'll help us overcome any problem we have. So as you send the sun out today, the S-O-N sun, um, the S-U-N, sorry, S-U-N sun out today to remind us of your love and that warm embrace with the sunshine, just remind us that you sent your S-O-N sun always in our life to give us that warm embrace and that, that lifting up of your love. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, we taught you guys uh, a new song last week, kind of ramping up into Easter, which is... Uh, I can't believe coming up to Sunday. I love this about, about God, that he has this plan, right? And even when in our humanity we mess things up or people around us mess things up, that he can hit this beautiful refresh button kind of in the browser of our lives. And he can renew his will and his, his plan, which is just amazing, right? Um, but I love even in... In Genesis, talking about the Old Testament passage where um, the serpent uh, tempted Adam and Eve, there's this crazy cool prophecy talking about how in the future someone would come, a Messiah would come to crush, crush the serpent, right? Which is this beautiful prophecy about Jesus showing up later on to bridge the gap between us. And God, and I love that He has this plan. He has this ability to hit the refresh button, but He also has this plan, this macro plan under the surface at all times, moving things forward. And I love this song. There's this beautiful verse. I don't know how many of you feel like you're still reeling from like 2020, 2021 a little bit. Yes, yes. When the world's on fire, it's not you don't have a plan when the sound system pops and you don't know what's happening. It's not like you don't have a plan. And when the earth gives way on this rock, your church will stand. I love this. 
Nothing has ever once surprised you. Nothing has ever once surprised you, and nothing has ever made you flinch. Let's go ahead and stand up together. Let's sing this simple chorus. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. You've been good on every promise, from Eden to Zion, from every dead end, and out of that grave. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. Let's sing it again. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. You've been good on every promise from Eden to Zion and every dead end and out of that grave. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will.
God's faithfulness, right? We talked about this last week. Sometimes the path and the plans that we have for our lives come to a dead end situation. A Red Sea experience where we feel like we have no way forward, no way out, and He always makes a way. It might be through the storm, it might be waiting for 40 years, it might be the other side of heaven, but He always makes a way. Let's just kind of confess that together, that we know He will. I know you will.
Father, we thank you that the resurrection of your son, Jesus, created this beautiful power over death in our lives. And that you're, you are constantly doing the miraculous and breathing new life into old things and bringing life into dead things. And we ask that you would Help the truth of that to kind of sink into our hearts and minds this morning as we move towards Good Friday and Easter. We recognize that miracle that was more than just a one-time experience but can happen right now in our souls, in our lives. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have a seat. Good morning again, you beautiful people. Y'all are beautiful, not just outside but inside and it's good to be here with you all this morning. Um, I want to share a few thoughts before we jump in here. One is, I always love when we do our own original songs. So thanks to Brent and the band for that's an original song uh, that, that, that Brent wrote and we do. And what a perfect time in this Palm Sunday leading up to Easter. Um, because that's what God does. God brings life from dead things. Um, in our world... This will be the pre-sermon <laughs> to the sermon. But in our world, there is evil all around. So you can't have 
if you're going to have love, if, you've, if there's, there's going to be unconditional love or if there's going to be an option to love, um, there's got to be a free will. Otherwise, it's not love, right? So we have a free will to love. I choose to love, love Jennifer. She chooses to love me. She doesn't have to. Look at me. Hey, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Matter of fact, I know you're not supposed to bring attention to this, but I, I grab, always wear a shirt to work to set up in. So I grabbed this shirt off my, off my uh, hanger today. I had a different shirt on setting up. And then when church started, I put this one on. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is so tight. I think I've gained some pounds. <laughs> so I feel a little insecure right now. That's all to say that. I didn't realize this shirt was going to be so tight this morning. So bear with me. Whew. All right. Uh, just kidding. I got to suck my good in here, Brent. You don't have to worry about that. But anyway, enough about me. Uh, so because we have free will, you can't love without free will. Um, I choose to love Jennifer. No one's making me love Jennifer. I choose to love her. We choose to love God. No one makes you love God. You choose to love God. That's love. But because of that, we're free to choose evil. We're free to choose sin. We're free to choose things that don't go along with God's design. And they're in the spiritual world of powers and principalities and, and of Satan and his demons. Um, they have chosen to not follow God. And it has wreaked havoc in our world. The principalities have, we have, I have. And because of it, God has nothing to do with any of that. God has nothing to do with any of that. But God will always bring life out of death. He will always bring something life-giving out of sin that leads to death. Always. So may we know as we go into this week of Palm Sunday and the leading up to Easter, wherever there's dead spaces in your life, wherever you've been affected neg negatively by sin, which always leads to death, would you know that God always can turn that around and bring life out of it? That's what God does. Some of you are going through a really tough time. I want you to know that God mourns and grieves with you. It's not God's fault. God doesn't want this for us. But here we find ourselves in this fallen, deprived world. I want to continue to remember our, our buddy Wayne Hoffman. Phyllis is here. His wife is here with us again. Uh, finds himself now at a nursing home because he's got leukemia. They've given him months to live. That's not God's plan. But God will always bring life out of it. Just like Brent said, I don't know how God's going to heal Wayne. It may be before he dies and heals him physically so he's around longer. Or it may be when he dies, he'll have a new glorified, resurrected body. One of the ways or another, he's going to heal Wayne. But we're going to keep praying that God heals him physically so he can stay longer on this earth. So let's keep praying for Wayne. I know there's a lot going on with us right now, uh, but I want to keep remembering Wayne. Also, this is uh, our friend and buddy uh, Adil Adil, would you stand up real quick, Adil? I want you all to see Adil. He also goes, Tony's kind of his American name, I guess. <laughs> but thank you. Adil said, Rob, I want to give the church a gift. And he, uh, he picked this out and bought this for us. And it's a beautiful 3D print of the cross and some of the scenes of Jesus' life. And it's just a gift from Adil to this church. And I want you to know something. I'm proud of this man. Talking about going through some stuff. Um, He's been through some stuff, and yet he keeps moving on, and God keeps using him and blessing him. And uh, talk with him afterwards. He actually is having a grand opening of a business, of a store of his, in a couple weeks. And so uh, talk with him afterwards. He'd love to share with you more, but we're proud of you, buddy. Thanks for this, and thanks for being here, buddy. We appreciate it. Yeah. I could go on more about this. What y'all don't know is Adil chooses to come here to the next chapter. He was uh, originally connected through Art Reed. Art, Art invited him. Um, and he comes and he says, Rob, I love the community. Everyone's welcoming and loving. That's why he comes. We probably don't always agree on all the theological stuff, but he's here because it's, he's, he feels loved and welcomed. And so I love that. And I love that this is a community that does that. And I love that you're a part of this community. Thanks. Thanks, Adil. 
All right, let's pray together, and then um, we'll get to the real sermon. Woo, who's excited about sermon number two? Whatever, you all, you all don't play with me today. All right, Griff, thanks. All right, let's pray. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm going to preach to her when I get down here. All right, let's pray together. God, we thank you for this day. Um, thank you that you're always resurrecting in this world that is depraved and is full of the effects of sin and death. You're always resurrecting things. So when there's dead areas in our life or there's circumstances that seem to be a dead end, I pray that we would experience your resurrection power. God, we pray for Wayne. God, we know that you can heal him. And so we pray that you would physically heal him from leukemia. Pray that you continue to give Phyllis um, support and people around her and him so they will know they're loved and they're not alone and give her rest and rejuvenate her in ways that she needs it. Father, uh, thank you for Pat Davis being here and for who her and her husband Jeff are and who they've been to us and now transplanting down in Florida, transplanting in Florida and starting there. Just pray that you continue to bless them as they bless the world and bless the state of Florida. Uh, God, it's good to see they've been back, uh, he and his wife. Uh, from Florida. Uh, it's good to see everyone, but just thank you for this community. Thank you that it's a community that loves and welcomes. I thank you for a deal, and I continue to ask that you use him in great ways. Now, I have your way during this time, God. I pray you open our ears and hearts up um, to really hear what you want to say to us. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. Um, so this is our third and final sermon on the E word. The E word, because if you're like my experience growing up, uh, evangelism could be kind of like a four-letter word. People are like, oh, don't come here with that stuff. Or the way that it was done or the way that it was delivered, it was just weird. And so we've been looking at that, trying to look at a kind of a new, fresh lens of evangelism because it's something that's vital. It's something vital that we share the good news of Jesus with the world. We looked at the first week, the good news is this, God has been reconciling himself in Jesus on the cross and the resurrection, not counting our sins against us. That's the good news. We need to be bearers of the good news, sharing with people, hey, God is no longer counting your sins against you. He nailed it on the cross with Jesus. That's the good news. Last week we looked at we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are the conduit that blesses the world. God wants to use us to bless the world and to share the love of God and his mercy and forgiveness to the world. And today I want to look at um, all of us have a thirsty heart we long for more in our heart as human beings. And the ultimate goal is we really can't be fully filled unless we're getting that from Jesus. We just can't. And so when we look at all of us kind of have a, a thirsty heart, a heart, heart that is longing. Um, I want to share one of my favorite pastors and authors is Greg Boyd. And I want to share some uh, influence that he has this morning in this message um, and one is on ducks. He was talking about, I guess, they, uh, his son wanted some ducks, and so they were raising ducks for a little bit. And uh, when the little ducklings come, the little, little ducklings, um, they started following his wife around everywhere, thinking that she was the mother duck, and they would just follow her. And she'd go in, they'd, they'd waddle over in. And, and he was talking about, which I didn't know this, is that ducks have this, which many of us do, um, they have this thing called imprinting where it, they come out of the womb wanting to attach and follow their mother. They don't know who their mother is, but whoever is kind of there and with them and leading them is their mother. It may be another duck. It may be a human being. It might be a dog. I don't know. But it's this thing called imprinting. And what is interesting is humans are born with the very same concept of imprinting. We are born to follow someone. It's like these little ducklings are going around going, are you my mommy? Are you my mommy? Are you my mommy? Now, some of us may have that in a different way, but hopefully not too many. But I think we go around like, well, I, I'm, I got to get my identity from somewhere. I got to follow somebody. I got to get my identity from some place. And we need to fill our innermost being 
with something. And we all, have a, we all have a need to feel like life is worth living, that we have significance and we have a purpose, and that we are loved. And God created us like that to lead us to Jesus. We have that device in us. The problem is we're born into a world full of lies. So we're looking for a real mommy, but we're born into a world full of lies that says um, money, especially in the American culture, money can be your mommy. Are you my mommy? Oh, you are. And we just kind of waddle and we chase the, we think if I keep getting more money and more money and more money, I will be happy. But it's a lie. And so we try to fill that longing with money and it doesn't work. We try to do it with power. If we just get enough power, I'll be fine. If, I, if we do it with pleasure, if I just seek enough pleasurable experiences, I'll be fine. All the while we're asking, will you be my mommy? Will you be my mommy? I need someone to be my mommy. Or maybe it's religion. Religion makes people feel special before God because we look down at all the other sinners so we think, well, if I can feel better about myself, I'll be just fine. I'll have a life worth living. Sometimes it's fame. We think um, if we can just get famous, that'll, that'll just fill that thirst in my heart. If I can just get famous. And we keep imprinting on false idols and false gods, and the world can't give us what we long for. We do it with relationships sometimes. Oh, if I could just date her, if I could just marry him, oh, I'd be great. We think that'll fill us, but it doesn't. And so as, of the, as we look at the word evangelism, we are to be bearers of the good news. But here's the thing. We have, we have to have had experience the good news in our life for us to give it to someone else. If, I'm not, if I have not experienced being filled with God and the love of God in my life, I can't bear that and be an image bearer of that to other people. And so it has to be good news to us first. We have to understand that God is no longer counting my sins against me, which I am so thankful and I love. And so I get that and I receive God's forgiveness. So the good news must be good news to us. We must be getting filled by Jesus as we long for more. And if we do that, then everything we do will flow out of that relationship. There's a few principles I want to look at this morning as we look at evangelism. One is this. The first one is on there. Regularly have your thirsty heart filled with the love of God. I don't do this enough, but when I do it, it makes a huge difference. I'm not talking about praying, although it's good to have your own prayer time and quiet time, do all that, Bible study time. I'm talking about regularly during your week, sit down quietly and let God love on you. I bet you don't do that enough. I don't. Let God love on you because that's when you're going to get the thirsty heart quenched. Just let him love on you during the week. That's what your soul was made for. It's water you were meant to drink. Just let him. I feel more at home when my spirit feels at home when I just sit down and just let God love on me and tell me who I am in God's eyes. So to the degree our heart is full, we will notice other people's empty hearts. And that's the motivation for evangelism. If my heart's full, I can recognize someone else's heart that isn't, and they're trying to imprint on other things. And I say, hey, let me tell you what's worked for me. It's almost like someone who's hungry, and you have an extra apple, and they say, man, I'm really hungry. You say, well, here, here's an extra apple. Take this apple. That's what evangelism is. Let me tell you what's, what's, what's really quenching my thirst. It's this. Take it if you want, but you seem kind of hungry and you seem kind of thirsty. I want to look at a passage um, in Acts chapter 17. And when I look at this, this will be kind of like the, the, the main text for the rest of the message. And it's really powerful. I want to pull out some things that are really powerful to me. And let me just say this. If you grew up in church, if you grew up in a religious um, setting, this may be a little tough to hear, but I hope you hear it. Acts chapter 17, starting in verse 16. While Paul was waiting for them, he was waiting for Silas and Timothy to come. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, 
he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. This was Athens was a very great city. They had all kinds of idols that they worshipped. The next verse being uh, verse 22 through 24. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the uh, Oropicus and said, people of Athens. He's addressing these folks. A lot of Greek philosophers. I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. He said, you have all these gods, but this one unknown God, let me tell you about this God. And then in verse 26 through 28, he says this, from one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. I love that line. God is not far from any of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said. He's even quoting some of these philosophers, these pagan philosophers. We are his offspring. And they continue on, he says this. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered. Paul's telling them, preaching this message. Some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. And some became believers in Jesus that day. So I want to look at that real quick. Paul goes to this very pagan city. They're worshiping all these gods. There's a lot of philosophers and Greek thinking minds there. He says, I see all of your gods, but there's this one God with the inscription to the unknown God. He creates a longing to search for God. But I promise you, Paul being the man he was, was bothered by all of these gods that he saw. I, I'm sure he was bothered by it. Athens was full of these idols. It would be me like going and preaching on Bourbon Street in New Orleans or some other place. I've only been there once when I was a kid, and uh, my mom covered my eyes most of the way through the street. And I'm like, why are you closing my eyes, Mom? Uh, because there's people, you know, there's, there's people, women and men, trying to seduce people to come in and dine with them. <laughs> and so it would be like me going and preaching in Bourbon Street, and all this would be going on around me. And yeah, you would have to see like, oh my gosh, this is bad. This is not good. Paul knew that, but he didn't say anything about that. He doesn't say this is bad. He sees the thirst behind their idolatry. He even compliments them. I can see you are very religious. Affirming the thirst behind the idolatry and he knows God is working in their hearts. Here's the second thing. So number two is look past the sin. Look past the sin in people's lives because there is a thirst that's driving what they're doing. If you, again, were raised in a real religious environment like I was, um, the problem is you were trained to look at the sin. I was trained to look at the sin. You were trained to look at the sin. And you're supposed to point the sin out. <laughs> we were really good at pointing people's, not our own sin, but other people's sin. We were really good at pointing them out. And here's what's interesting. If a Pharisee was watching Paul preach this message in Athens, you know what a Pharisee would have said? He's a compromiser. He's talking to all of these idolaters and he's not even pointing out the idolatry. He's actually complimenting them. He's not only not saying anything, he's complimenting them. What kind of preacher does this? He's not, this is what they would be saying. He's not cracking down on sin the way that he should be cracking down on sin. And you know what's interesting? They judge Jesus the same way. What kind of Messiah is this? The religious. 
Who is this that hangs out with prostitutes and tax collectors? He's not even cracking down on him. Instead, he's going to parties with them. Who? What kind of Messiah? He's weak on sin. He's not cracking down. He's a compromiser. That's what they would say. And here's what I am learning and have learned, and I started Next Chapter Church with this in mind. It is the religious that will always do the judging. The religious will always do the judging. I would say this. If we're preaching the good news like Paul and like Jesus, you're going to be judged by the Pharisees. The Pharisees will judge you, and you will feel like an outsider. Um, But if you get judged by the Pharisees, that's good news. Don't let it bother you because you're doing something right. Amen. Amen. I feel like I'm all alone up here, but, uh, but it's true. It's the religious that will judge. But the proclamation that God has not, does not hold our sins against us, that's not good news to the religious. That's bad news because they want to tell everybody about their sin. They want to point out their sin. And religious folk will judge other people to make themselves feel better. And so when someone comes along and says, God isn't holding your sin against you, that's not good news to them because they feed off the sin, so they judge. Some of us, I do, some of us have the Pharisee just in our head. We may not say it, but we sure think it. I do this sometimes too. We have it in our head. And, And you know you have it in your head. Um, when you're hanging out with folks that you've been trained to judge and you feel guilty because you're not pointing out your disagreements. <laughs> Have you ever had that? That's what we do. Like, well, I should be saying something here. No, you shouldn't. But I feel like I should because this isn't right. This is wrong. But look at Paul. He didn't do any of that with the Athenians. He didn't do any of that. But, but, but the religious... And God loves all of us, and we've all been religious at times. Uh, But the religious, what they want to do is they're pretty much the moral police in our world. And that's not what being a Christ follower is all about. So don't evangelize like that. But when the accuser starts up in your brain, um, if that voice comes up, let it be good news because it's saying "Don't, don't be like that. Don't be like that. But here's what's interesting. Sometimes talking with folks, I know it can be emotionally exhausting. Sometimes you're talking with people, it can just, they can be talkers and it can be boring and it can be long and your eyes are crossed and you're trying to listen and it can just be arduous sometimes. But I want us to know um, that what they're saying can sound wrong to you at times and you may have a thousand things you could correct. Our job as Christ followers is to listen to the whispers of their thirsty heart. And may we not just talk about what we disagree with, but just listen to their heart. Listen to their heart. I would say our job as as followers of Jesus is to unite with any kingdom truth that we find. If there is a truth that we have in common, unite with that. Um, our job is to find Jesus in the words of people. You're always going to find stuff you don't agree with. Our job is to find words that we agree with that are truth and that are words of Jesus, knowing like Paul did that God is working in every person's life. God is working in every person's life. So listen to what is going on in their world. Acts 17, 23, we read it already, but we'll put it up here again. Paul says this, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. I think Paul is grieved by all the idols that are around him. I think it bugged him. Um, But we find out because Paul quotes one of their philosophers that Paul actually studies this. He studies their philosophers. They weren't Christian philosophers, but Paul studies them. He wants to relate with the people of Athens. He wants to get on the inside of their world I'm sure it wasn't a pleasant experience for him, but he finds one idol to the unknown God, and instead of arguing about all of the other gods, he focuses on the one that he can connect with them with. 
So may we look for connection with people. He says, can I just talk to you about this one idol, this one that says to an unknown God? It was his opening. And this is the idol that best expressed their thirsty heart. Because this idol says, um, we have all these gods, but we're not sure that this system is totally complete. This system that we do of all these gods, we're not sure that's totally complete. They're acknowledging that there may be a God out there that they don't know about. And they're acknowledging that their gods don't fully satisfy. And so Paul sees an area he can slip in and be an evangelist here to them. The third principle is this. Listen, learn, and connect. As we are evangelists, listen, learn, and connect. Listen carefully to the life of another person. Listen to their perspective. Listen to their worldview. Look for points you can connect with them on as we share the good news of Jesus. Too often, I think us Christians think evangelism is about speaking and teaching. And I think it's more about listening and learning rather than telling and teaching. Listen and learn from folks. Because unless you listen and learn, you don't really earn the right to speak and teach in their life. Um, when they say something that might bother you, don't argue with them. Our call is to love people. That means listening and learning from folks. Here's something I want to ask you. You guys can say the answer out loud, and we'll, we'll try to wrap this bad boy up here soon. Um, when you talk to Jesus, this is not a trick question, when you talk to Jesus, does Jesus listen to you? Yeah, some of you are not sure. I, yes, he does. Um, okay. Is there anything in your life that Jesus might disagree with? Yeah. And he still listens to you anyway. That's the same point. We're to love people like Jesus does. I may not agree, I may not believe everything they say, but I'm going to listen to them because Jesus does that with me. We're to love people the way that Jesus loved them. And there's a thousand things that you can argue about, but maybe find that one thing that you can build upon. Um, listen and learn from people. Don't just listen waiting to have your turn to share. Listen and learn not for the purpose of waiting our turn, but to love someone is to listen to someone. May we love people by listening to them, which ascribes great worth to them. Um, and may we do it as a means to an, not do it as a means to an end. Don't listen for a means to an end so you can, you can share Jesus with them. But we share Jesus because we love them and we're listening to them. Here's the last principle. Evangelism must be a product of loving people. Evangelism must be a byproduct of loving people. Um, this might sound wrong to us, but our most fundamental call is not to evangelize. That is something we're to do, but it's not our most fundamental call. But our fundamental call, the bullseye, the center of the target, is to love people. That's what we're to do. And if you're loving somebody... You will know the source of life. You will be filled by the source of life. And it will be perfectly naturally at some point for you to share that with someone who's thirsty. But if you love them in order to evangelize them, now you've taken a person's worth and you've trampled on it. You don't, you don't love someone to evangelize. You love, and because you love, you want to share what has filled your life. I remember... Um, this has been years ago. This has happened past since then, too. But years ago, I remember uh, a fellow minister of mine I hadn't heard from in years. Lived in Louisville. Called me up one day. I was living up here. He said, Rob, this is Jeff. How you doing? I'm like, oh, good. Good to hear from you, Jeff. He's asking how things were going. I was like, well, it's really nice. Hey, can I come up and meet you sometime? I want to talk about an opportunity that I want to give you. I'm like, uh yeah, yeah, come on up, we'll catch up. So he came up from Louisville, and we hung out, and halfway through the dinner, he gets this flip chart out, and it's one of those uh, network marketing things. So I'm like, what? <laughs> I can tell you right then 
That, that felt gross to me. Because he wasn't calling to check on me. He was calling to sell me something. And I can tell you right now, people of God, the church of next chapter, if you're trying to sell Jesus to someone without loving them, it will feel gross to them. Because they don't want that. Our call is to love people. And in the process of loving, we naturally share a Jesus who isn't counting our sins against them. But don't you dare bring their worth down by trying to make them a project and an agenda. It's gross. We all know what that feels like. The band can come on up. But if you're full and they're empty, not sharing how you got full is not loving. It'd be like if I had a fridge full of food and the people next door were starving and you're not going to share any of your food with them. That wouldn't be loving. But if I share the food because they're starving, I've got extra food. That's loving. As we go throughout our days, as we get filled with the, with the quenching, when, when Jesus quenches our thirst and we get filled by that, then it's only natural that we're going to share that with other people. That's the loving thing to do. It is wrong, and I've been guilty of this, it is wrong to keep the good news to ourselves. It's wrong. Rob, it's wrong. Okay, thank you, Rob. I know. It's wrong. We can't keep the, that's not loving, but we must be loving in the way that we share. Love just wants to help in any way that we can. Love is an in, in and of itself. We don't love for the purpose of anything. We just love. And part of loving is being bearers of good news. That says, hey, I know what that thirst is like. I know what it's like trying to imprint and find things of value. And I have found it and Jesus Christ has filled my soul. And I want you to know about it. What you do with it is up to you. I may give you an apple if you're hungry and you don't eat the apple, that's on you. But if you take the apple and eat it, then I've helped you. So as we go throughout this week, may we recognize that God is all is at work around us in everybody's life. Um, may we listen. May we love them by listening to them. May we try to find ways we can connect with them. They might say things that bothers you. They might be a lifestyle that bothers you. I get that. May we be like Paul. I'm going to look past all that stuff. I'm going to look past the sin to see a heart that's thirsting for more. And that more is Jesus. So let's go share that with the world as we love the world. I want to pray and then we'll end with a song. Um, if you're here this morning, I never know from week to week where people are in their lives. But if you're here this morning and you've never received the forgiveness of what Jesus did on the cross and three days later rose from the dead, that he's not counting your sin against you anymore. That's the good news. If you've never accepted that, God would love you to accept that today. Accept the forgiveness of Jesus. He's not counting your sin against you anymore. And live in that. And in that relationship, you'll experience love and you can be able, you'll be able to give that love to folks. If you've never done that, the Bible just says, just call on the name of the Lord. You can pray here when I pray and just say, Jesus, I accept your forgiveness based on what you did on the cross by sending your son Jesus. And I want to live and experience that forgiveness. And now come inside of my life. I want to live for you. That's all you have to do. Something similar to that. And you will be saved today. Let's pray together and then we'll sing. God, thank you for this day. Thank you, God that you listen to me even though there's plenty of things that uh, you disagree of what's going on in my life. I pray that you would help all of us to be filled by you. God, may you fill our spirits to overflowing so that it then makes it really obvious for folks who are trying to fill it in other ways. And then may we just share out of our love of what, what has filled us. May we give them that extra apple. May we give them some food that's extra. And just look for people who are longing and thirsting. Um, help us to share your good news as we go through our days and weeks. God, give us a boldness to share. When the opportunity presents itself, may we be bold 
and sharing what has filled our spirit. God, if there's anyone here that has never accepted you for the first time, I pray that you would draw themselves to you and that they would come to know and accept your forgiveness today. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to ask the prayer ministers if they would come to the sides of the, of the, of the stage. If you, have prayer, if you have a prayer need for anything, they would love to pray with you. Or if you say, Rob, I accepted Jesus in my heart today, come and let them know. They would love to, to pray with you about that as well. So let's stand together and we'll close with a song. There's no weapon stronger than your love. There's no weapon stronger than your love. No heart, no death can Closes in on every side when battles rage and when the waters rise. I fear no evil for I know the truth. Nothing can separate my heart from you. Let's sing together. Cause there's no weapon stronger than.
sense, no weapon stronger than your love. There's no weapon stronger than your love. No height, no death can overcome, cause there's no weapon stronger than great song to go out on. There's no weapon stronger than God's love. Um, so may we just be image bearers of God and how we love people this week. And uh, pray for boldness to share this good news with people that need to be filled. We all need it. And so um, let's do that. Next Sunday's Easter Sunday. Invite someone to come to church with. That'd be great. Hopefully we'll uh, just have a great, big, fun, full time here next Sunday. Let's pray together. God, thank you. There truly is no weapon stronger than your love. Thank you for forgiveness when we think that hate is stronger and unforgiveness is stronger and revenge is stronger. It's just not. So may we be filled by your love this week so that we can love others and we can share this good news of your love with them. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Have a great day. See you next week. Cause there's no weapon stronger than your love Cause there's no weapon stronger than your love No height, no death can overcome Cause there's no weapon stronger There's no weapon, there's no weapon There's no weapon stronger Can't overcome Cause